Now, this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying. Now, basically, this is a musking pattern. Now, there's many of these out there. The best known being black would be this, this, this style here. Uh, you have that peacock and the thorax or olive or whatever. Now, one of my favourite flies when I was working at a trout fishery, I mean, over 15 years, was this, the pheasant tail. Which is basically tied with copper wire this month. Uh, and this is the, the muskin version, which is just basically uh, the same but tied in the style of the muskin. And uh, so what we've got here is a, just a pheasant tail nymph. Now, if you're tying or using pheasant tail fibre and it's midge you want to represent, you'll not go far wrong because it's by far one of the best fibres to use and one that I'll be happy to use all the time. So we're going to be tying this version. Now the colour uh, is basically pheasant tail. It's a natural pheasant tail, the uh, natural crop pheasant tail. And now I've dyed it chartreuse. Now it looks quite dark obviously because of the natural colour of the pheasant tail, which that's what you want. And when it's wet, I mean if you look at the tips, it does look very black. I mean if, when you hold it up and the light's right, you wouldn't think it was uh, a green in it. So. That's the colour you're looking for. So if you have pheasant tails and you've got the vineyard dyes I use, so that's a chartreuse. Now, who I'm using? You get tens and twelves are the two sizes mainly, but in this case I'm using a size size twelve. Is the one I use most. Uh, this is the competition heavyweight one. This is black nickel, which helps with the colour as well, darkens it down. Thread colour, I'm just using black, just to keep it dark. Uh, simple as that, and it's the 8-0 uni. You have waxed the thread, so we're just going to run the thread down and then come back up. So we're halfway and then come back up, so we've got a base of thread down. Now you want to bring your thread up to about maybe head length or so away from the eye. Now we tie in some, this is the, the glow bright, uh, this is a multi yarn, which is just a, a white antron really, uh, in this case. Now I've got two strands, just put, doubled it up, put them together, just going to line the ends up here a wee bit. I'm going to tie this forward, which this is going to represent the breathers of the midge. Uh, the muskin's a good style, it's a great way to get a nice style and a, to get the shape, helps you to get the shape of the midge. Now what I'm going to do here is come up over the top with the others and cut a, an angle towards the back of the hook. So we've got a tapered body. Simply just, what I do here is to stop the fibres moving. Uh, put my, my finger right at the cut ends, keep it there, and then as the thread comes close, I just slip my finger back, and you'll see how it controls the cut ends. And you get a neat, you get a nice neat uh, taper in that case. So then you run your thread to the back of the hook or in, when you're in line with the, the barb. Now I'm using, now you can use either black or you can use a, I've got a dark a sooty olive hackles here I'm using up. Uh, this was a brown actually and I dyed it a nice dark olive. I'm using some of these wee, these short fibres or short uh, feathers. So I'm going to use the, these for tails. It just needs an impression of tail. You could use a pheasant tail, which I did in the original one, but the, they don't last very long. But when you're catching fish, I don't really bother. I'm quite happy to change it. Now, you're looking for a few fibres to represent the tail. You're looking for a tail length, around about the, the body length of the fly. So we just catch that on the top. Just check the length. We tied longer than that, that's just a wee bit short. This helps to taper it and gives it the style where it's known as. Now we trim this the length of the body, so it's basically there. So that's your body length there. To keep with the colour combination, I'm using a, a copper wire as a rib. Just a fine copper wire. Go back a turn just to catch this in. Come back over. 
and then I'm going to use the feather dyed. Looking round, about half a dozen fibres. Just bring it out, tips will line up. You're going to hold the base of the fibres, come round with a turn, and then slip it into the tips. So this helps to give you a nice taper in the body. And then we just run my thread up, tying in the waist ends. You've got to remember, there's going to be, on this here, there's going to be a wee bit of go, uh, orange or uh, tinsel just at this point here. So we leave a space for that. That's to represent the wing buds. Now the pheasant tail is the weak, a weak fibre. So what I do is just wind it towards myself. Wind it up. Uh, basically, when I wind my thread, I wind away. And I'll do the same when I do that with the rib. Because I wind the pheasant tail the opposite way, when I bring the rib up it catches it in far better and it's much stronger. So basically to tie this off, what you've got to do is to come over the pheasant tail with a turn and then do a turn on the hook. Do the same again. Now that's enough to hold that to you. Basically you bring your rib up and the rib is going to basically protect that. The other thing that happens when you do it this way, you'll, you can see the rib far better. There's about five turns there. Just bring it straight up, catch it in. Just give it a wee bit of wax on my thread. Make a look a an area around about maybe a mil and a half for the tinsel. So there's about a good half dozen turns there. Now the tinsel I'm using is this one. You see, it's peacock orange. Now the orange is a uh, is a copper colour like. So if you look at the underside, I can get it right round the right way. You'll see that nice copper orange colour, which is basically what you're looking for. I have some in my desk. I tie this in. Now, I usually, you can either, it doesn't matter how you tie it in, you can flip it around. But the peacock's facing me, so when I bring this over, I'm, it's naturally going to bring the, this orange to the front. And then, turn or two, catch it in. Nice straight turns. Trim away. Now for the thorax cover I'm going to use the same pheasant tail. Now what I normally do is if I've got some of the smaller length fibres at the base, you can see I've been taking away the, the long stuff for the body, but down here I've got the short. But when I don't have that, I've got the tip which can be a bit, it's not the best fibre but it's good for as well to use up for thorax cover. So I'm going to bring out a few fibres. Just Pull it off. Now I'm going to trim it further up to where I want it to be, how thick I want it to be. So then we catch this on the top, wind it down towards the breathers in this case. Now the thorax can be the black thread, it could be that it works with the black thread, or like I like this, this is the, the glister, it's the peacock black colour. Light bright, they do similar colours to this. You could use the UV black, again, that, that does work. You could use the dark olives, there's lots of colours you can use. Really, this is this, this is a kind of dark olive, it's a black green, so that's why it works. So I'm just going down and coming back up towards the breathers. Now, there's the space we left at the beginning, that's going to be for our, our head, obviously. Now, we have to split. The, the multi the yarn, we need to split it in half. Just make a kind of bow tie out it, and then we're going to bring over the thorax cover, peel it back, take your time, peel it back, and then pinch and hold. Go we'll two or three turns, and then we can tighten up. Now, there's two or three turns there, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Maybe that. I'm going to straight away, I'm going to fold this back because I've got enough room there that I can fold it back. And just build the thread up. Just build the thread up onto those uh, peacock, uh, the, the pheasant tail fibres. Keeping the thread tight, don't let it go. Quick finish. And trim away the thread. We can then trim away the pheasant tail. We can bring out the breathers. Now you can tie them, just take it forward. Cut over the eye. Sometimes you get it wrong though. If you cut over the eye, uh, try and keep your thread, your 
your, your scissors straight and then we just nice straight cut you can then push these back, puff them out and there we are and that's your breathers now there is times you really need breathers that they react to that because they can see them now what I'm going to do is just pull these back fibres and out put a wee bit of varnish in there They round about just on the area where they're going to come back out. Let them go upside down here. Just take your time you're doing this. I'm just going to lightly bring these out so you can see what they should look like. And there you go. And that's the musking uh, done with the. Chartreuse dyed uh, pheasant tails. I say this is a, a great colour, and you can see how dark it is. It's very black like. And what happened when I first started, when I first tied this pheasant tail version, and I was looking at the buzzers that was coming off. Uh, when I was catching fish, they, they were falling out. There was that many, and when I was looking in the palm of my hand, I could see this colour. I could see the green in the the colour. And I thought, well, I've, got, I've got some feathers that's close to that, and uh, it was so so good. It was a great pattern. And the time of year in our water, they came off in April, mainly April. But I could catch throughout the season with this colour right through, tying this different sizes. So it's a great it's a great colour to have. Certainly worth tying. So they are. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, it does help if you subscribe and. Thank you for watching.